What is every single class that you need to know in your first year of engineering? Hey everyone, my name's Oliver, and today I'm gonna to be telling you how you can get a top quality first year engineering education completely online, completely for free. So this is gonna be kind of a DIY engineering degree video guide, but it's also gonna be an informative video for those of you who are going into your first year of engineering soon and you can figure out what kinds of topics you might be covering. For those of you who may not know, I just finished my third year of mechatronics engineering at McMaster University. So this video was initially going to be literally every single course you need to know to become a mechatronics engineer, but halfway through writing it, I realized the video would be way too long. So I've cut it up into multiple parts. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned for the next few parts of these videos. But today I'm just gonna be covering the basics that every single first year engineer needs to know. So to make sure this video doesn't go on forever, I'm gonna be removing all of the fluff and the extra courses that a university would normally make you take on top of your engineering courses and just give you the engineering courses that you need to know. I'm gonna be covering these core competencies one by one and I'll be giving you at least one playlist and at least one book recommendation for every course and at the end, I'll tell you exactly what you should have learned and what you should be able to do by the end of a course. Another important piece of context for this video is that when you start your first year of engineering at a university, you will either take a first general year with everybody else in your cohort, or you will specialize immediately and then be stuck to that specialization for the next four years. Since I'm currently a McMaster student and I already went through their general first year, I'm gonna be referencing this a lot throughout the video, so be sure to look at the link in the description if you wanna follow along or if you wanna reference it after. So let's kick it off by getting into the basic subjects that everybody needs to know. These subjects include the wonderful first year physics, math, and chemistry. If you took these courses in high school, you'll be happy to know that not all of this will be completely new to you. You've probably seen or heard at least some of the topics that I'm going to be covering. So let's kick it off with the three math courses that you have to take in your first year. First off, we have Calculus 1. This is your basic level of calculus. They start you off at limits and derivatives, and then you get into integration, and towards the end, you learn about double integrals. My textbook recommendation that I think will best teach you these concepts is Calculus Early Transcendentals by James Stewart. You should be able to understand most of the content in the first half of this book by the end of Calculus 1. I'm gonna put links in the description to every single textbook that I spoke about, and if you do decide to buy one, it's connected to my Amazon affiliate account, so I think I get like a 1% commission if you decide to buy it, but if you do, much appreciated. But obviously, textbooks are expensive, so if you do a Google search or two, you might be able to find alternative methods of acquiring these textbooks. But of course, who would ever think to even do such a thing? So my next recommendation is to buy an older version or a used textbook so that you don't have to pay full price. And if you do buy an older version, odds are the content will be literally exactly the same minus a few changes in practice problems but it really doesn't make sense to print new versions with something like calculus, which hasn't changed in the last 100 years. Now, if you would prefer to digest the content by a course, Khan Academy has a great course on Calculus 1 that teaches you literally everything you need to know. So what should you be able to do by the end of Calculus 1? You should understand basic derivatives, chain rule, functions, and limits. And you should understand different integration methods, definite and indefinite integrals, U substitution, trigonometric substitution, and some basic differential equations. Also, I'll be compiling a huge list of resources below in the description for every single subject that I talked about. It'll have the textbook, the course, Tons of links for you to go and check out, so be sure to look in the description to find what you're looking for. All right, great, so after Calculus 1, what's the next course? Well, naturally, Calculus 2. The textbook for this course is literally exactly the same, it's just the second half of the textbook, and guess what? You can go on Khan Academy and check out all their videos on their Calculus 2 course. Again, it's a great place to go, and it will teach you a lot. So, by the end of Calculus 2, what should you know? You should be able to do integration by parts, differential equations involving Euler's method, how to get the area and volume of a graph, triple integrals, parametric equations, polar coordinates and some vectors, and series integrations. So our third and final math course is going to be linear algebra. This course is essentially just teaching you how to do basic matrix math and matrix manipulation. In some ways, this course might be more important than the calculus courses that you take, especially if you're doing a computer, hardware, or software related field, because computers love to do matrix math. It's in your GPU, and oftentimes AI algorithms will also be using matrix math. 
So learning about matrices and how to manipulate them is an extremely important and valuable skill for any engineer in those fields. And for this class, I'm gonna be directing you towards the textbook Elementary Linear Algebra Applications version by Anton and Roars. You can also find this subject on Khan Academy and learn everything that you need to know there. For a course like this, I would also recommend learning a little bit of the programming language Octave or MATLAB, because eventually you won't be bothered to do math problems by hand and it will be 10 times faster to do it on the computer. And that brings us to the end of the math courses, but a quick note here, as with any engineering course, you do not have to be a genius to figure out how these things work. You just have to do lots and lots of practice problems and understand the concepts. In fact, if you're going to do anything, just take a textbook and do every single problem in that textbook without looking at any of the answers and you will be amazing. Now, why do you have to learn these math courses or the physics and chemistry courses that I'm going to be talking about next? Well, because these basics will be used in so many of your future courses and professors will just be sitting down and do a 10 step integration in one step and you will be like, what the hell just happened? So you have to know exactly what's going on in order to keep up. It's extremely important to understand the basics, even if they might be a little bit boring, so that you can eventually move on to the fun stuff and be good at it. Our second subject matter is going to be physics, and you can expect to take two courses in your first year. The first course is introductory mechanics, and the second course is waves, electricity, and magnetism. For both of these courses, I recommend the textbook Physics for Scientists and Engineers by Sir Way Jowett. And once again, Khan Academy is a great place to go for their AP Physics course. It teaches you absolutely everything that you would need to know, including the electricity and magnetism portion of the course. And by the end of these courses, you should be able to understand the following. The equations of linear motion, basic forces, and how to solve problems involving forces. Work, rotational energy, power, momentum, and oscillations. And for the second course, waves, electricity, and magnetism, you should be able to understand electric forces and fields, Gauss's law, DC circuits, electric potential, Ampere's and Biosavart's law, induction, waves, and diffraction of light. So with the joy of first year physics out of the way, we now move on to chemistry. Unless you're going into chemical engineering, you will usually only take one chemistry course in your first year. A textbook that you can reference is called General Chemistry by R.H. Petrucci. I think I screwed that up, but whatever. <laughs> Overall, in my opinion, this course is not super important for the degree. Of course, unless you're going into chemical engineering, then it's extremely important. But the most that you'll do with chemistry for a software or mechanical or mechatronics degree is understanding how the atoms work together in the silicon of your transistors of a computer chip, for example. And I bet you can guess where you can find an online course for this. Yep, you're right, it's Khan Academy. The great thing about laying out all of the courses and telling you what you should know by the end of each course is that you can pick and choose the things that you might actually need to know for your future years. So by the end of this chemistry course, you should be able to understand the following. Atomic structure, periodic trends, chemical bonding, solubility and chemical equilibrium, acids and bases, thermodynamics and entropy, electrochemistry, and intermolecular forces. So these six courses that I just covered are about one semester worth of a first year engineering degree, so you're halfway there. If you want some tips on how to study and how to get good grades while you're at it, check out this video that I made which will tell you how to beat the system and really succeed in university. Now, since I'm gonna be excluding some of the topics, I'm gonna to give you these other ones as kind of optional topics based on what you're interested in. These topics include introductory programming, a course on engineering drawing and design, so 3D modeling, some type of engineering design course, and a course on materials engineering. So for the programming course, I would recommend learning either Python or C. I'll have links to free CodeCamp courses that will teach you these programming languages in the description. As for which one you should do, I would say that if you don't know anything at all about programming, then going with Python is a really good idea. It's super easy, the syntax is very user-friendly, and it won't cause you very much frustration at all. But if you already know a programming language, then I would recommend learning C instead. A lot of the future courses that you take in a software or hardware related field will likely be taught in C, so it's a good to have a base knowledge of how C works. By the end of one of these programming courses, the basic concepts that you should understand are functions, Boolean statements, basic math, conditional statements, loops, lists or arrays, objects and classes, and recursion. 
And our next somewhat optional course is computer-aided design. This is mainly going to be geared towards people who are interested in a mechanical engineering related field, but it can also be useful for a software engineer who wants to design or build a physical product and they need to know how to model it. There aren't too many textbooks from this field, but I was able to find something from MIT that teaches you the basics of engineering, drawing, and design. You should also learn how to use a 3D solid modeling software such as Autodesk Inventor or SolidWorks. Both of these are paid and you can usually get a free version if you're at an educational institution, but if you're doing this on your own, some free options for you are Blender or FreeCAD, which looks okay, but I've personally never used either of these, but they both look pretty decent. Once you've understood how to draw, how an assembly fits together, different isometric views, and how to use a 3D solid modeling software, I would recommend taking some of the drawings from that MIT course and trying to implement them in a 3D modeling software. This way, you'll be able to apply what you learned and create pretty much anything that you want. Last but not least, we have materials engineering and engineering design. I've put resources in the video description for textbooks or videos that you can use to learn about these topics, but this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm not gonna go super in depth about exactly what you need to know by the end of it, but I do think that understanding basic engineering design principles and how to think like an engineer is probably one of the most valuable things that you'll learn throughout your degree. If you wanna build anything or understand understand how things work, then understanding engineering design and the materials that you can use is extremely valuable and important. One final thing which I think is actually the most important part of this entire video. In order to get good at any of these things, you have to practice. You can't just practice for one day or one week and cram it all in at once. You have to make studying and practicing these concepts a part of your everyday and a part of your life so that you can actually retain some of the information that you learn. If you just take a course, read a textbook without applying any of it, all you're gonna do is continually overwhelm yourself with more and more information that you have no idea how to use and no idea what to do with. So every day, write down some questions about the things that you learned that you can look at and ask yourself in the future to see if you remember anything. Make sure that you do your practice problems, and over time you will slowly get better at each and every subject. As they say, practice makes perfect. If you do for some reason decide to read all of the textbooks and take all of these online courses, then tell me in the comments how it went and if you would recommend it. If you know anyone who would be interested, or if you just want to share the engineering resources that I've provided, be sure to send them this video and help them out. Honestly, these Khan Academy courses are really dang good and they teach you so much more than your professors will teach you, so I really recommend checking it out. Don't forget to like if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and I'll catch you in part two.